seated this morning. Sin is powerful, but Jesus' blood was greater. Amen. Aren't you thankful? church, we have a responsibility to say, wake up. Amen. We've got to wake up first, the body of Christ, and then we're the ones that can be a part of that one more great awakening that God brings, one more revival before he comes back. And George Whitfield was one who would speak before that first great awakening. Jonathan Edwards, most of you have probably heard his message, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. If you haven't, you listen to that message on audio and you definitely will feel the conviction. Hey Amen. How many have ever heard it before? <clears throat> Sinners in the hands of an angry God. He spoke that one and boy, I tell you, people were weeping. Felt such conviction because of the words that God gave him. But he said this. Resolution one, I will live for God. Resolution two, if no one else does, I still will. Are you resolved in that same way today? Yes. To go to heaven... Full to enjoy God is infinitely better than the most pleasant accommodations here. Yeah. And I think we've all found that to be true. John Wesley, another one of the reformers, the early Great Awakening, he said, Give me a hundred preachers 
who fear nothing but sin and desire nothing but God, and I care not whether they be clergymen or laymen, they alone will shake the gates of hell and set up the kingdom of heaven upon earth. We need some more men and women of God who've heard from God, amen, who've wept between the porch and the altar and said, God, we've got to have a word from you, yes. amen. We need that one more time in this country. As we stated a couple weeks back in message number one, there's a sleepwalking, there's a lethargic, complacent, and indifferent church in 2023 in America that needs another great awakening. And what we mean by that is a time of spiritual renewal. Amen? A time of revival that's brought about by people going back to the basics of the gospel, back to Jesus, who he is, and back to what he did for us at Calvary. And if we'll get there, God's going to send one more great awakening, I believe, in our lifetime. Amen? 1 Corinthians 15, verse 34. If you'd like to stand in honor of God's word this morning, 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 34. It says, Awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. We're just going to look at that one verse this morning. You can be seated. But I want us to look at two commands that God gives us. Two commands to a sleepwalking, apathetic church. And the reason why the Lord gives these commands. I think there's some things we need to see in this verse 34 of 1 Corinthians 15. Number one, the command that God gives is awake to righteousness. None of us likes to hear that alarm when it goes off in the morning. Amen. How many of you re rebuke it at least four or five times? <laughs> Hit snooze as many times as you can. None of us like to be woken up. But if God's going to do something, we've got to, as a church, we've got to be wakened up. Amen. We've got to awake to righteousness. Adam Clark said this in his commentary. Shake off your slumber. Awake fully, thoroughly, as you ought to do. Be in earnest. Do not trifle with God, your souls, and eternity. We're not playing games when we're talking about God's redemption plan. Amen. It's serious. It's not a time to be playing church. It's not a time to be thinking that we can make a deathbed confession. Amen? Yes, you can. But why would you want to miss out on the life of knowing Jesus and walking with him every day and leave it to the chance of a deathbed confession? Amen? We need the Spirit of God every day. Commentary critical and explanatory of the Bible says this. Literally out of sleep, of carnal intoxication, into which you are thrown by the influence of these skeptics. We need to awake out of our slumber. We need to awake to righteousness. When it comes to being fully awake, we can get up and out of bed for what pleases our flesh. Isn't it amazing? The cares and the pleasures of this life, the temporary, the fleeting entertainment and amusement that stirs our emotions and awakens our five senses as humans. But we are fully awake are we this morning, are we fully awake to the things of the Holy Spirit, the eternal things of God, the righteousness and the holiness which only comes to us through what Christ did for us in his finished work at Calvary? Are we awake and are we saying, God, I want it all? Amen. I want all that you have for me. I want life and life more abundantly. I don't want the temporary, how much of our life when the trumpet sounds and Jesus comes back for his church how much of our life is really not going to matter. Most of it is fleeting and temporary. Things that weigh us down even. How much money is in our checkbook, right? Who's in political office? Much of the things that are such a burden to us, the moment that trumpet sounds, are you going to worry about it? I doubt it. If you know the Lord, if you're in relationship with Him, those temporary fleeting things aren't going to matter. It's not going to matter who won the Super Bowl last year. I could probably ask you right now, and most of you don't even remember. <laughs> Ladies are like, yes, Pastor, we don't remember and we don't care. <laughs> Maybe a few of the guys would remember. But those temporary, amusing, entertaining things, are they evil in and of themselves? No, I'm not saying that. But how much of our life do we get let be consumed with the temporary and we're not allowing the Holy Spirit to get us ready for the eternal. Amen? Yeah. We ought to be saying, God, I want all that you have for me. Amen. Most of the modern church, you cannot even get them out of bed, out of their slumber for church on Sundays and Wednesdays, much less to participate in the deeper things of God. It's time for us to wake up. 
Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12, it says this, that you be not slothful, but followers of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Amen? God, I want all the promises that you have for me. I don't want to be asleep when you start handing out the promises. Amen? Amen. Snoring so loud that I miss the promises that you're wanting to dole out in my life. I want all of them. Amen? Through faith and patience, we inherit the promises. The righteousness we want to awaken to, it's not self-effort. It's not selfish ambition or self-righteousness. God will never honor that kind of so-called righteousness. We need to be clothed in Christ's righteousness, His holiness. Amen? It can only happen as we daily express, as we evidence our faith properly, as we evidence our faith exclusively in Jesus. Amen? Who the Bible says He is. And in Jesus, what it says He did for us on the cross. God responds to that kind of faith. Amen? We've said in times past, in the messages past, God doesn't respond to any old faith. Right? He responds to proper faith. The faith that He wants, the faith, faith in His Son that He sent to die for us and to give us everlasting life. Is the righteousness of Christ on display in your life individually to the extent that God wants it to be today? Well, that's what Sunday school was about, wasn't it? Yeah. God's saying something today. Monty and I didn't get together. <laughs> I didn't read his lesson plan. The Holy Spirit saying, are we allowing there to be true evidence in our lives that we belong to Christ? Amen. Is the righteousness of Jesus Christ being seen in Harper's Ferry, in Jefferson County, as God desires it to be seen today? Is the righteousness of Christ on display in our churches and in this great nation of the United States of America to the extent that God wants it to be? Sad to say, I would have to say no to most of those. Amen? Yeah. And the solution is not everybody else. The solution is me. Amen? Me getting on my face before God and saying, God, let your light shine in me. And God, let your light shine through me to the people that I have the opportunity to influence with the gospel. Amen? If each one of us is doing that, then we can see the answer to that question be yes. God's moving in the way he wants to in our nation, in our community. God wants to move in a powerful way. It's time for the remnant church to awake to righteousness and ask God to help our communities and our nation to awake to righteousness as well. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a disgrace to any people. Amen? And we have gone down the slippery slope of sin far too much in this country. Our leadership has... We need to be a church that's standing up and saying, we've got to awake to righteousness. Amen? Amen? To what God tells us in his word. Number two, the second command that God gives in 1 Corinthians 15, 34 is, awake to righteousness. Number two, sin not. Sin not. There's a hyper grace movement in the modern church in America right now that really honestly minimizes how deadly and devastating sin really is. It teaches that God, many of them do, teaches that God saves us in our sins instead of God saving us out of our sins. To me, it doesn't even make any sense, but you can explain away a lot of things, right? Yeah. Talk in circles about a lot of things. God give us discerning ears and a discerning heart to know what the truth of God's word says regarding sin. God doesn't leave you out in the ocean and throw you a life preserver because you're drowning in your sin and say, okay, you're good once you get the life preserver and leaves you bobbing in the waves. You've got the life preserver. You're all good. That's God saving us in our sins, right? No, thank God. Aren't you thankful? Whenever you got saved, do you remember that day? I remember that day. Yes. He didn't leave me in the ocean trying on my own, flailing to keep my head above water. He brought me into the boat. <laughs> He said, I'm not only going to save you out, I'm going to save you out of your sins and give you a, a whole different perspective. Yes. God doesn't leave us in our sins and say, you can still live the way you've always lived. Amen. What foolishness that is. You're still bound in your sins if God has not brought you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Right. We better have a discerning ear. God, give me a discerning ear and a discerning heart to recognize the false teaching that's out there. It may fill your church to tell people God saves you in your sins. 
But it won't save people from hell. It won't save them from the torment of Satan having his way in their life. We have to come out of our sins so that God can give us new life. Amen? First yes. Peter chapter 2, verse 9. First Peter 2, verse 9, it says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Now that means God's own, really, in the original language. But I think there's a few of us who are more peculiar than others. Amen? <laughs> the, the definition of that word has changed. But um, we're strange because, to the world because Jesus is on the inside of us. Amen? That's foreign to most of the world. But we're God's own people. It says, why? That you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. We don't live in the darkness anymore. We live in his marvelous light. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 17 and 18. It says, wherefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. I will be a father unto you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. God wants us to be a separated people, amen, a consecrated people. And we do that by laying our lives at the foot of the cross and saying, God, I accept your sacrifice of your son. It's not by saying, God, look at my performance. I deserve it because I don't deserve it. Neither do you. <laughs> amen. It doesn't matter how many times you go to church. How many chapters you read of your Bible, how many hours you pray, you can never deserve God's forgiveness. Amen? If you could, Jesus wouldn't have had to go to the cross. You could have just read more chapters of your Bible, right? You could have just gone. To, are those things important? Yes. After you're saved, but those things don't save you. Does that make sense? God's saying we need to have His righteousness. We need to come out of darkness. We need to come into His marvelous light. Which only happens by way of the cross. Amen. What Jesus did, not what you do. And thank God that's a relief for all of us, right? It's not my performance. It's Christ's finished work. Yes. Jesus pulled himself up on the nails just to speak. And he said seven things and one of them was, it is finished. Amen. Everything you need for life and godliness, I'm taking care of it right now. Yes. Through his death, he took care of it. So it's not our performance. It's what Jesus did to bring us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Amen. It takes more than mind over matter to purge sin from your life. There's people who are teaching that today yeah. in the so-called Christian church in America. Mind over matter. There's a false teaching today that says if you just clear your mind of a sin consciousness, mm -hmm. that you will no longer be controlled by sin. How <laughs> foolish that is. Yeah. It's sending people to hell if they believe that. Because again, if you could just get sin out of your mind, Jesus didn't have to go to the cross. You could have just got sin out of your mind and been free from it. Yep. How many know sin, is? it will control you. It will be your master, Romans chapter 6 says. It will dominate you, your sin nature, if you've not submitted it to Christ. Yes. And so we need to understand there's no such thing as just clearing our mind of a sin consciousness. Because there's a nature we're born with that it will rise up again. You may get it out of your mind for a few minutes, but it will come up again. And that nature needs to be submitted to Christ. It took Jesus and it took the cross of Christ, His finished work there to cleanse us from every sin stain of our past. To free us not only of our sin stains, as I said, aren't you thankful there's not a big whiteboard up here every Sunday with all the sins you've ever committed written on it? Jesus said, no, I've taken care of that. Amen. Amen. And thankfully, he takes care of it mostly in private, if we'll listen. Amen. He's not about embarrassing you or forcing you to serve him through embarrassment. He deals with us in conviction in private, if we'll listen. Not only has he wiped the whiteboard clean, but he has broken the dominion, the grip, the power that the sin nature had over our lives. And in that, the cross was a double cure. Amen. It, it disabled the sin factory, if you will, in our hearts that used to pump that ugly, sludgy sin consciousness that we have. It comes from our sinful nature, doesn't it? All you have to do is have somebody cut you off in traffic or stub your toe in the middle of the night on the coffee table and you realize it's still there. Amen. It's still there. But it's reckoned dead, amen? It's reckoned as that's not what's going to control my life anymore. Jesus is now on the throne of my heart. 
And we've got to be controlled. It's not mind over matter. It's Jesus is the only thing that matters. Amen? My mind is going to be on Him. My heart's going to be fully submitted to Him. I'm trusting in God's redemption plan to free me from sin and nothing else. Because nothing else will free us from sin and allow us to be the people that God wants us to be. Romans chapter 3, verses 24 through 26. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation. That word propitiation is our substitute. You were supposed to die on the cross, but Jesus said, I'll take your place. Amen? What a powerful thing to think about. Yes. Amen. He's our propitiation through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God to declare, I say at this time, His righteousness, that He might be just and the justifier of him who <coughs> believes in Jesus. Our responsibility, it says it in that last phrase, is to just believe. Amen? He's the just, and he is the justifier. And that's how our sins are dealt with today. We need that in these last days. The only way you can sin not is by the help of God's Holy Spirit. And the only way you can have the help of God's Holy Spirit is if you are constantly expressing the kind of faith God's looking for. Proper faith. Not in your religious performance of some list of do's and don'ts. God doesn't have a list. Aren't you thankful? Amen. He doesn't have a list. Religion has a list, but God doesn't. He's looking for proper, exclusive faith in Christ's performance. His finished work on the cross. Then when God the Father looks at you, He doesn't see your performance anymore. Once you've expressed faith in His Son, what does He see? His blood covering and taking away all your sins. And he sees you clothed in his son's righteousness. Then that's why you can be called righteous. The Holy Spirit is only given to those who are going God's way. If we want his help, we've got to go God's way. And God's way is by way of Jesus and the cross. The last thing I want us to look at this morning from this verse, 1 Corinthians 15, 34, is why is it so important that we awake to righteousness and that we sin not? It says in that verse, for some have not the knowledge of God, and this is shameful. How is a world going to come to know the God that we serve <laughs> if we don't awake to righteousness and quit sinning? Amen? Amen? That's God's message to the church, not to the unsaved. It's the message to the church. It's the message to our church. Awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. How many people, rightfully so, will say, I'm not in heaven today because of how a so-called Christian misrepresented who Jesus is. And we ought to say, God, I ought to grieve our hearts. God, I never want to misrepresent your true character. I don't want to be a hypocrite and cause someone else to miss out on your best for their life. Some have not the knowledge of God. When they look at us, and again, the whole Sunday school class this morning was about that, if you missed it. Will they see Jesus in us? Amen? Less of us and more of Him. They need to know the Lord. The United States of America, Harper's Ferry, has a church on almost every corner. Yet God's assessment of our beautiful community of this great nation would be that too many have not the knowledge of God. Amen? The true church, the remnant church that is going to fill up and flow, that God is going to fill up and flow through in these last days, is going to be, uh, have to be in believers who've gone by way of Jesus and the cross, and believers who have more than just profession, the Christian t-shirt, the fish bumper sticker, right? The what would Jesus do bracelet. We have more than just profession. We're going to have to have possession of Christ's righteousness. They're going to have to see his robe of righteousness covering. We had mistakes in the past. We're not perfect. But Christ has covered us. Amen. With his righteousness. They need to see that we have possession of Christ's righteousness. This knowledge of God is not a matter of being able to quote facts about Jesus. There's lots of people who can do that. Professors in Bible co or in a secular college whose number one goal is to get freshmen who come into their class, their philosophy class, to denounce 
the Lord Jesus Christ that they've learned about their whole life. I'm telling you, that's very prevalent in our secular colleges. They have a knowledge of God. They can quote facts about Jesus and use it for the wrong purposes. We need more than that. We need to have more than just facts about the God of the Bible. It's a matter of experiential knowledge of God through daily personal relationship with Him. I hope that's what you came to church for this morning. Amen. I just want to be with Jesus. Yeah, I want to be with my brothers and sisters in Christ. And it's fun to see what they're wearing. It's fun to find out how their week went. It's fun to hear about, you know, their experiences throughout the week. But I want to be with Jesus. Amen. I want to sense his presence. I want to hear him speaking to me, even if it's hard. Amen. Even if it's convicting, I just want to hear God speak to me. Experiential knowledge through daily personal relationship with Jesus. We ought to cry out like the Apostle Paul in Philippians chapter 3 verse 10. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. And then I want to know the Lord. I want to know him and experience all that he has for me. If the church, the body of Christ in 2023 is not awakening to righteousness and demonstrating how to live free from sin, then the church is just living in the same shame and foolishness of the world. Amen. Amen. We're not here to entertain and amuse. We're not here to see how many people we can pack into the building. Amen. And doing nothing with it. Every soul that walks into this building, God's holding us accountable for the gospel that we've presented to them. What good news are we giving them? We don't want to be living in shame and foolishness like the world. We have the answer and his name is Jesus. Amen. We have the means for a person to be cleansed, to be set free, to be made holy. And it's the cross of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's time for the body of Christ to wake up. It's time for us to represent the holiness of God appropriately. Not just on Sundays and Wednesdays, but every day. And it's time that we realize how much we need the Holy Spirit's help in all of that. Amen. He's good at making us holy because he's the... Holy Spirit. Amen. We need His help. It's time for the church to shake itself out of its slumber and to be the ambassadors for Jesus Christ that this world really needs. Amen. And let's allow the Lord to do that in our hearts. God, I want people to see how real you are. You're not just some mythological story that people believe in out of some mythological book called the Bible. No, Jesus is real. Amen. I talk to Him every day. He speaks to me. He has a relationship with me. He's helping me become more like him. The world needs to hear about that Jesus. Is he real to you in that way? Are you ready to wake up and say, God, I want all your promises. I want all that you have for me. I want to be used of you in however, uh, whatever way you choose to use me. Amen. God wants to send one more great awakening. It's time for us to awaken to righteousness, to stop sinning, quit sinning. And say, God, I want to be used of you. Amen. Would you stand with me this morning? We're going to close out this service this morning with communion. But before we get to that this morning, I've asked James if he could help me on the piano. I want us to sing that song, Jesus is the Answer. Amen. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Do you believe that? He was the answer for your life. Thank God He didn't save you in your sins. He saved you out of darkness. He brought you into His marvelous light. And you know what? The closer you get to the light, the more you find out there's a few more blemishes. Amen? If God showed us all the blemishes when we first got saved, boy, it would would overwhelm us. But the closer we get to Jesus, who is the light, He shows us a little bit more, doesn't He? He shows us a few more things that need to be stripped away. So that we can look more like Him. So that we can sound more like Him. So that we can be more like Him. And maybe He's put His finger on some things in your life today. As you have had the light of Jesus shine on your heart today. And you know there's some things you need to lay down at His feet. You say, God, forgive me. I don't want sin to dominate my life. I don't want an act of sin to dominate my life. And I certainly don't want a sin nature to dominating, making me do things I don't even want to do. That's what the sin nature will do if it's not surrendered to Christ. Sin will have a a devastating, deadly effect. Don't play with sin. Say, God, I need your help with that today. 
Are you lost? Are you without Jesus? Without a personal relationship with Christ today? Jesus died to save you from your sins. And he died to forgive you this morning if you'll allow him to come in. And I want us to pray this prayer and then we're going to sing this song together. That I've asked James to help us with. But if you don't know Jesus as your Savior or you've gotten away from him and you know you need to rededicate your heart to him. Would you pray this prayer this morning? Don't waste another minute. We don't know what's going to happen in this life. There's no guarantees of tomorrow. Amen? And if you've got some things, whether it's an act of sin or maybe you've been living in a lifestyle of sin, nobody else may know that but you and God. God's not here to condemn you for any of that today. He's here to set you free. Amen? Would you pray this, this prayer with us and invite Jesus to come in and make the difference in your heart today? Would you pray this prayer with me? Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name, admitting and acknowledging that I'm a sinner. I believe, Jesus, that you died on the cross for my sins, paying the penalty that I deserve. And I am in need of you, Jesus, to be my Savior, to be my Lord. Please forgive me for all my sin. Wash me. Make me clean and help me from this day forward to live for you. Thank you for saving me, making me ready for heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer this morning, let me know. Let someone know who's a Christian. We want to encourage you to grow in that relationship with God. Amen. It's not facts about Jesus that we're interested in. It's you being in living, loving, covenant relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Get a Bible and start reading it. Let God talk to you through his word. Learn how to pray. Come to church. That will help you learn how to pray. But start looking at the Lord's Prayer in Matthew 6 and different passages and say, God, teach me how to pray. I want to know how to talk to you. And then let God do that work that he's wanting to do in your heart. You started a new relationship with him today. He wants to help you by His Holy Spirit. Church, if you believe that Jesus is the answer for the world today, that the cross is still enough, that the blood is still enough, and then if we're going to see another great awakening, we need people to come back to the simple gospel. Would you sing this song with us? And let's just believe God, amen, to do the work that only He can do. It's going to be a spiritual work that God does, a work of His Holy Spirit. But can we sing this song together? before we receive communion, and let's believe the Lord to bring about this great awakening. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above Him there's no other. Jesus is the way.
God, we need to quit sinning, God, so that this world can have the knowledge of Jesus Christ as they see him in our lives. Purify your church, God. Set us ablaze with your glory. God, use us to make a difference in these last days. There's a harvest that's ripe and ready for, for, for Jesus. And help us, Lord God, to be aware of that, God, to be awakened, God, to the work that you're wanting to do. God, we just thank you for that this morning. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. You can be seated this morning. I'm going to ask those who are helping to serve communion if you would come forward this morning. If you're a born-again believer, you've accepted Jesus as your Savior. We believe in open communion. Communion, receiving communion doesn't make you a member of all over Pentecostal church. All you have to do is be a Christian. Amen. Doesn't save you that to receive communion, you should already be saved. <laughs> And if you're not sure that your heart is right with God, I would encourage you to not receive communion this morning and make sure that things are right with the Lord first. But if you're a Christian this morning, you're welcome to receive with us. If you'll take the elements and hold them, we're going to receive together in just a moment. We want, uh, we want you to, to uh, receive all that God has for you today. Praise the Lord.
of your broken body. Lord, all that you did for us, Lord God, on that Via Dolorosa, the suffering, the torment, the anguish that you went through, God, to free us from our sins. We thank you that you died on the cross, not just as another spotless lamb, but as the lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world, who takes away our sins. God, we thank you for what this bread represents today. And we receive it this morning with thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you receive together? After this manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. And so we want to receive this juice this morning representing the blood of Jesus. Would you thank him with me for this juice this morning? Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord God, for your blood that was spilled out on Calvary. Lord, we thank you as we sang earlier this morning. Your blood has not lost its power. It's still just as powerful today to wash away our sins and to give us, Lord, the benefits of the new covenant. Lord, we just thank you for your precious blood that you've washed us, that you've given us a hope of heaven. You've given us eternal life through your blood. We receive this this morning with thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, let's receive together. song together. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Let's just thank him for what he's done for us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
remember all that you've done for us, God. The price was expensive for us to be saved. It costs us nothing. We receive it freely by grace through faith, but God, it costs you everything. God, may we never forget your life that was spilled out so that we might be free. God, may we no longer be dominated by sin. May we no longer be giving place to the devil, letting him have his way in our life. God, help us to walk in your righteousness, God, free from sin, the people that you want us to be. God, we just thank you. We do remember today, God. We look forward to that day when we will be in the marriage supper of the Lamb with you very soon, Lord God. Lord, help us, Lord God, in the meantime to be your light, God, to show people the answer, the hope, the peace there is in Jesus. Give us divine appointments even this week, God, where we can sow a seed of the gospel in someone's life. God, we just thank you for that. Awaken your church, God, to be the church that you want us to be in these last days. Use us for your glory this week, we pray. We thank you for it in Jesus' name.